Behold, I have good news of great joy, and it's for all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. But we get really excited about the gifts, too, don't we? I do. I mean, close your eyes for a moment and think of that one Christmas gift. Maybe it was when you were growing up, or maybe you're hoping for it this year, that you just really had to have. Your, your Christmas experience was going to be less than without it. Do you have it in your mind? There you go. <laughs> Mine was a bright orange mongoose bike when I was younger. I wanted that bike so bad. And mine was Christmas. I was determined it was going to be ruined if I didn't get that as a gift. And of course, when you come out in the morning, if your gift is shaped like a bike, you know pretty quickly whether or not it's there. Or so I thought. My parents were pretty clever. They hid it in a closet and didn't show it until the very end after I had thought I wasn't going to get it. And can you imagine my face, 10-year-old me, getting the gift that I want? Or maybe you remember the feeling when you got yours. Or maybe as parents, when you bought that gift for your kid and you remember their face lighting up, you probably didn't have to ask them to say thank you. It really is great to receive gifts, right? It's wonderful to get that gift that you really, really wanted. But in order to receive a gift, somebody has to be first willing to give one. Now you might think, duh, pastor, that's the way that works. But pause and think about that for a moment. That none of those gifts you receive you would actually get unless someone was willing to give them to you. Well, our God teaches and demonstrates for us today on Christmas Eve, through the witness of his word, that it is also good to give gifts. In fact, I challenge and encourage you this Christmas to consider your gifts, your exchange of gifts with one another, a reflection of the real gift that is being given to you by God, Jesus Christ. So that's sort of a rhetorical question. Do you like gifts? But do you like to give gifts? When we receive gifts from our parents or siblings, if we're honest sometimes, do we really deserve to get those gifts? Sometimes no. Sometimes we're fighting with our siblings. Maybe this particular year you have just been a nightmare for your parents and you don't deserve any gifts. Maybe you talk back to them a lot. Or maybe you disobeyed them. Or maybe you fought with your spouse and things were just hard. Yet, come Christmas morning, when you round the corner and see the tree, there are still gifts under there for you. Why do parents and family members still buy gifts on Christmas, even if we don't always deserve them? Well, it's because it's a manifestation of their love for you. The giving of the gift is their display of love, and that display of love, their love for you, runs deeper than your disobedience, deeper than your failures, deeper than when you fought with your siblings or with your spouse. Our love runs deeper than that. And so we give gifts even when we don't deserve them. And the parental love and the familial love that you have that gives gifts to those who are unworthy comes from God. That love was shared and revealed to us in the gospel reading we just heard read. The greatest demonstration of unconditional, undeserving love ever. That ever was and ever will be. It was modeled for your parents. It's modeled for you right now. This unconditional love. And not just from your earthly parents and family. But now because of this gift of Jesus, you have a new heavenly father and he has a gift for you this Christmas. 
Now, not all gifts are created equal. Just as when you imagined that gift that you wanted so badly, when you opened it, you went crazy. There's also some funny videos out there, and maybe this happened to you, of somebody opening a gift and just going, uh, wasn't so excited about it. Well, not all gifts are created equal, but that one that you remembered, the one I asked you to recall, that just made your Christmas, I'm sure it elicited from you unbridled joy. I'm sure your face lit up. I'm sure you said, oh, mom and dad, thank you so much, thank you so much. And then you wanted to go and use it immediately. A cherished memory. Or maybe you're looking forward to that this year. I see a couple of parents out there with twinkles in their eye. They've got something planned. But the gift that God has for you is even greater than that. Even more amazing than that. Now think about that gift again. And if you're like me, it was a gift you got many years ago. Do you know where it is now? Do you still have it? I don't have my bike anymore. I don't even remember what happened to that bike I wanted so badly. It's probably rusted out or recycled into something else by now. And even if I can't remember, I also grew out of it, too. The bike you ride when you're 10 is certainly not for adults. The truth is, I don't have any idea where it's at. And I would wager that if you got a gift like that years ago that you just had to have, you probably don't remember where it is either. Or if you do still have it, I'm sure you don't think about it in the same way. Well, I have good news for you. The gift you're getting from God is of a different kind. It's not something that can rust or be destroyed. It's not something you grow out of. It speaks to the unbelievable love that you have been given in Christ. A never-ending eternal love. A gift that literally keeps on giving. Yep, you guessed it. The gift is Jesus. Now before you say, Pastor, I saw that one coming from a mile away... And roll your eyes and move on to a new thought. I want you to take a moment and pause and really think about what that statement means. And to do that, let's look at the text for tonight. Because God brings his Savior, the almighty God of the universe, brings his Savior into the world in a way that we would never come up with, a way that we would never imagine. If you're thinking of the Savior, the chosen one, the Messiah of coming into the world... He's certainly going to be born in an important place to an important person, right? He should be in a palace and in a place of position and power so that he can do the task for which he's been sent. And yet, the Almighty God of the universe humbles himself to be born a baby in the womb of a sinful woman. The God of the universe does that. And he's not born in a palace surrounded by wealth and security and power, but in a cave outside of a small town, not even able to get a room at the inn. And he's born into a feeding trough for animals. But surely you think that if the Chosen One, the Messiah, the Son of God, is being born into the world, the important people are going to be told at least... Where are the angels? Where are they going to proclaim? Surely the palace and the temple. But no, the angels don't appear to any of those people. But on a hillside outside of Jerusalem, to shepherds of all people. And shepherds are not important or powerful. It was not seen as a good job. They're certainly not the first on the list of people you would tell about the arrival of the chosen one, the one you have been waiting for for centuries and millennia, and the first people that it's announced to are shepherds. This is all done for you. This humiliation that God endures to become one of his own creatures, born under the law, for you. 
We're just scratching the the surface of the depth of the meaning of what God is doing in Jesus. Because underneath all of that, underneath all of the unexpected places to find the King of Kings, the Savior of the world, is the fact that every single person that is involved in this story are sinners that have made themselves enemies of God. They're disobeyers, liars, idolaters. The list goes on and on. And yet still, the gift is given. Wow, what kind of love is that that God has for you and for me and for the world to send his son in the midst of all of that? If you know the story of Christmas, you know not soon af- not too long after this, Herod finds out that this baby has been born and seeks to kill it. God certainly could have put himself in a place where that he wasn't at danger from earthly powers, yet he has humbled himself for us. Let that sink in for a moment. The God of the universe made himself weak and vulnerable to be a sacrifice for you, to save you, to be the best gift ever given for you. So tonight on Christmas Eve, in this very room, you're doing the most important thing you will do this Christmas season. You paused and you listened and you heard God's word. You heard that he revealed this gift to you, that he sent this gift for you, You're listening to what God has to say about himself. You're hearing about the root cause of all the joy of the Christmas season. You're being reminded what our act of earthly gift giving is a reflection of. The great gift that God has given you in Jesus. And that your love for one another is a pale reflection of the love that God bears for you. Tomorrow morning, you're going to get up and you're going to be excited. It's Christmas. There's going to be gifts to open. Maybe you've got to drive to a family member's house and you're going to open your gifts there. But I challenge and encourage you to take a moment at the beginning of your morning tomorrow. Before you tear into the wrapping paper and experience the joy of receiving a gift given in love, Open up your Bibles and reread Luke chapter 2, 1 through 20 that you heard tonight. Remind yourself of the greatest gift given on Christmas, a gift given for you freely from the unconditional love that God has for you, the real gift of Christmas. And remind yourselves that this gift, it runs deeper than your failures, it runs deeper than your disobedience. And any sin, it runs even deeper than death. For the greatest gift is Jesus, who has come to bring life and life abundantly. So listen to God's word concerning this gift and rejoice, for it is indeed your gift from God. Rejoice in thanksgiving that God so loved the world, that God so loved you, that he sent Jesus to display his love his unconditional love for you. That he sent Jesus to conquer sin, your sin, and death, your death forever. Rejoice in the gift of Christmas. Behold, I have good news of great joy. It is for you. For God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, the greatest gift, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds this Christmas season and always in the joyous knowledge of God's gift for you in Jesus, and the peace that passes all understanding, being secure in him until he comes again to finish what he started and make all things new, including you. Amen.